Hey guys, it's Reefaholic. I just wanted to put out a quick video on my CO2 scrubber. I've had a lot of people ask questions about the parts that I used, how it works, why did I drill into the side of my skimmer cup. So I'm going to try to answer some of those questions now. The reason why I set it up is because my tank is still young and even with calc, even though I'm dosing calc. I am dosing a fairly low dose when it hits the water, but I'm dosing it 150 times a day. So I think it's like three mLs when it hits the water. So um, I could dose more potent, like five mLs when it hits the water and dose like maybe 120 times a day or something like that. And it would drive the pH up higher, but I don't want to spike the water too much. So that's why I decided to put a scrubber on. And the reason why I drilled into this cup is because if I would have drilled into the top, this manual neck cleaner, when I turn this, it would have interfered with this connection right here because it would have, it would have been on there and I would have had to disconnect this to, to clean my neck. And I didn't want to have to do that. So that's why I drilled into the side. And somebody asked, how did you drill into the side without it cracking? And when you work with plastics, it's always a good idea to use a plastic drill bit. You can get them from Tap Plastics, E-Plastics, one of these plastic stores. It's the only way to go when you're working with plastics. So how does this thing work? There's two ways you can do it. I would definitely recommend doing it the recirculating way. When you're pulling the air from the skimmer, you can either hook directly to the inlet on your pump or this inlet right here. So this is where it starts pulling air. So it's sucking this air through these canisters from the skimmer. So it's basically sucking from here, but it starts sucking right here, going up, it goes through the first one, goes through the second one, and then like that. And I have them hooked together in the middle. Hold on just a second. I don't know if you can see that. Let me move you. I just have them hooked together with a elbow. So they're basically, this one is just a regular BRS CO2 scrubber canister. And the other one is their higher dollar canister for carbon GFO. I just used that one because I had it. And, um, these connectors, I got them at US Plastics, and they're really, really good. They're actually too good, because if you wanna unhook this hose, it's really, really difficult. So I would recommend just using the regular barb fittings. You don't have to get nothing crazy. These are like really good. This is not leaking at all, so you don't need nothing crazy. Uh, but I would definitely, if you're gonna do it, pick up some elbows. Um, Pick up some uh, 90s. This is a 90 over here, just like this. Pick up a Y, and then you could pick up a couple like these nipples. If you're gonna use this valve, I'll link all this stuff in the description for you guys. The valve and all the parts if you wanna do it. This is silicone tubing. You don't have to use silicone. You can just use regular plastic tubing like the, like the tubing that BRS supplies. Uh, this is all 3 8 inch. Uh, when you're drilling, uh, this is a grommet right here. When you drill, you want to make sure you get the right drill bit for your grommet. So this is just a rubber grommet. That's why it looks really clean. Uh, what else can I tell you guys? Uh, that right there where it is attached, hold on. I kind of adapted that with just a piece of tubing. You can see I put a piece of tubing over that little inlet and then I put this tubing over that tubing and it fits snug. So that's how I did that. I just kind of made it work. Uh, what else? Oh, so when I open this valve, it's going to start sucking room air. And when it does that, it's sucking CO2 rich air and it's going to make the pH drop. And the only reason why I put that there is because if my pH were to get over 
because I like it right around 8.3. If it climbed over 8.4 during the peak photo period, I'm gonna open this valve and let air come from the room. And that nipple is there because I might run a line to outside because that air, even though it's not CO2 rich, it's less potent than what's in the CO2 scrubber. So it won't be as big of a drop in my pH as if I pulled room air. So I plan on having it that way and having another little ball valve to where I could open up to room air if I needed to. But just running it to outside, it's going to drop the pH by like six, seven, eight points, maybe somewhere around in there is what I've found. That's my game plan. But that's pretty much it. Let me show you the media. Oh, but first, before we do that, I want to show you the valve that it does actually work. The air is going to take the path of least resistance and it's going to start pulling from here when this is open. So right now this is closed. So when it's closed, it's making it suck it through, through the reactor from the skimmer cup. But watch when I open it. Hey guys, real quick, I wanted to tell you why I picked an electronic ball valve. They're wide open, they do not restrict flow, they don't get hot. This one has an automatic shut off and they're just better. So if you wanna use a solenoid valve, it'll still work, but I wouldn't recommend it. So I want you to keep an eye right here on this water and listen for the click of this switch. Now listen to the valve. Now you see the water quit bubbling, right? So we are now pulling room air. And watch, I'm gonna click it back on. Hear the valve? And then there goes the air, it's sucking back from the skimmer again. So it definitely works, I highly recommend it. My pH when I started, I think I already told you guys it was about eight, 8.1, and immediately the first night it went up to 8.3. So I was pretty excited about that. They definitely work. Um, this media, I didn't get it from BRS. So there's a place online where you can get the media because this stuff is expensive and you can get more for a cheaper price at this place. And I will leave a link to where I got this media and all the parts, including the uh, electric ball valve in the description. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, oh, one other thing. Hold on just a second. I have to tell you guys, if you have your skimmer overflow, it will nuke your system. You don't want that. You don't want this going back into your system. So what you want to do, you want to have some kind of a fail safe. And if you look back here, hold on. I got another hole drilled and that goes that pipe, if it overflows, it'll go into my sump. And some of you guys might be thinking, well, why would you do that? Why would you want it to overflow into your sump? And that's simple. It's because I never have an overflow. But if I did, if it was an emergency, that's where it would go. And I could quickly do a water change and export the nutrients that went into the tank. But I highly doubt that that's ever going to happen. And if it does, it just does. But at least I have a fail safe. Uh, you can also have like a skim mate locker to where it'll go in there. Mine's in the garage. I haven't hooked it up, but uh, also I usually drain this cup before it gets over this line right here. So I'll let, I'll let it get to about there and then I'll just drain it with this little valve. And that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to do this, I highly recommend it. It's definitely going to drive your pH up give you better calcification and growth and it's just a good way to help your corals grow faster they say oh my god i see the way you shine take your hand my dear and bless them both in mine you know you stopped me dead while i was passing by and now i beg to see you dance just one more time Ooh, I
But behind closed doors, I'm a fool for your love. Rest 